evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks, and welcome to Theology Tuesday. Uh, we are exciting Greater St. Stephen First Church, located at 3728 Eastbury Street on the corner of Sydney at Eastbury in the heart of Southeast Fort Worth, Texas. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 51240, Fort Worth, Texas 76105. And we are in this wonderful little book, Finding God in Hard Places. You can get your copy. There's information on the screen, but I encourage you to pick up your own copy. As I said last week, you can pick up great nuggets for personal study, great nuggets of wisdom so that you can begin to navigate through these hard places so that you can find God in them with you. Um, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this day. God, we ask that you would bless our time together. Help us, God, to find you in the difficult places, in these hard places in our lives. Discouragement is a hard place. Help us. It's in your name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Last week, I told you that uh, the, the book itself uses numbers, the 21st chapter, verses 4 through 5, the uh, King James, the New King James Version, and it reads, From Mount Hor they set out by the way of the sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became very discouraged because of the way the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. The opening three verses of Numbers 21 report that the children of Israel experienced a God-given victory over the king of Erech. Uh, and they called the place Mount Horma the Mound of Destruction. It was their first victory over people of the Promised Land. The country of Edom was the last hindrance for them to conquer. Uh, they were seeking passage through the land, and unfortunately, the Edomites said no. You know, they went and said, hey, can we come through your land? We're, we're just trying to make it over there. This is a short way for us to go. Can we come through? And the Edomites said no. <laughs> so that meant they had to go around. They had to go back and take the long way around. Uh, this means to reach the land that God had given them, they would need to go back toward the wilderness and away from Canaan. They were trying to get to Canaan, so that's why they were asking the Edomites, could they go through their land? And they said, no. This would be enough to discourage anyone. There is a shorter path, but you can't take it. There is a quicker way, but someone is standing in the way of that, and now you must go the long way around. Nobody wants to feel like they are backtracking. Subsequently, the people became discouraged because of the complications and the hardships they experienced. We've come all this way and now we have to go back the way we've come uh, only to get to the place where we want to go, which lies ahead. What a disappointment. Someone once said, don't let today's disappointments cast a shadow on tomorrow's dreams. The children of Israel had a promise from God that was within their grasp. They were ready to take possession of their possession and disappointment is being felt, but it does not have to remain or prevent them from taking hold of their dream. Life is full of curveballs that, that are bound or that bound and, and come around all the time. They just show up. You know, the saying is that the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. That's a curveball. You've got one plan, but something's happened and you can't use it. It's part of life that cannot be stopped from happening. Along our journey, there will be all kinds of stressors, situations, and disappointments that happen, and we will find ourselves struggling with disappointment and discouragement. We all deal with discouragement no matter no one is immune. Remember I said that last week, nobody's immune. It's not that you can go into a doctor's office and get a shot against discouragement and become immune. Life happens. We're going to become disappoint disappointment. We're going to become discouraged at some point in our life. It happens to all of us. But we have to make sure we don't allow ourselves to let those feelings of discouragement overtake us. 
It is impossible to live divorced from discouragement. That's what he shares in the, in the book. It's impossible to live our lives divorced from discouragement. We can take a few steps to help us live victoriously while discouragement surrounds us. And again, I got these little nuggets out of this wonderful little book, Finding God in Hard Places. And one of the things he says, add up all your successes of the past. Add up all your successes of the past. Why? Because discouragement causes us to forget about our past victories. We tend to forget what God has done for us and the good things that have come our way. Add up all your successes. Write them down. Start a journal so that you can go back and see them. Read them. Add up all your successes so that you can look back and remember how good God has been. And then look for another way around and pray for discernment. I got this out of the book. Look for another way, a, a way forward and pray for discouragement. The Israelites had to go back toward the wilderness to get to Canaan. They had to keep moving so they didn't have time to stand still and dwell on everything that was going wrong. How did we underestimate the king of Edom? I'm sure they asked themselves that. What made us believe he would say yes? When you dwell on all the what ifs, you're wasting time. It's time to devise a new approach. We need to take our discouragement and allow it to stimulate our creativity. Pray for discernment. Ask God to give you the wisdom you need to do whatever it is that you need to do. Begin to brainstorm your options. See this as an opportunity to grow and then get up and go. And then remember who God is. Shift your focus from your discouraging circumstances to God. We forget that it's the same God who came through before. It, in the wilderness, having to take the long way around, it was the same God who stepped in with supernatural power to bring about the Israelite deliverance from Egypt. It was the same God that provided manna and quail in the wilderness. It was the same God that had given them water from a rock. Remembering who God is also reminds us that our situations may change, but that God never changes. You have to remember who God is and shift your focus from what's going on to the God who's able to help you. And then choose to respond in praise. If you begin remembering your successes, you pray and ask for God's help and remember and know that the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You know that help is on the way. That reason, that's reason enough to, God, to go to God in praise. That's reason enough to throw up your hands and say, hallelujah, thank you, God. That's reason enough to praise. Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. Thank you for joining us again for Theology Tuesday. Join me again next week as we pick up on the next chapter. Be blessed.